A 21-year-old female presents to the emergency department complaining of a rash after spending several days studying. She states, quote, I was really focused on studying, so I guess I didn't notice it until today, end quote. The patient has no other past medical history and runs for the school track team. On exam, you note several erythematous raised lesions on her lower extremities in an anterior distribution along the shin. They are painful to palpation. A review of vital signs reveals no abnormalities. Microscopic examination of the lesions reveal extensive subcutaneous fat involvement. Which of the following may also be associated with this diagnosis? A. Coccidiomycosis B. Cushing syndrome C. Pancreatic adenocarcinoma D. Squamous cell carcinoma or E. Hepatitis C Now pause the video if you want to think about this and make a guess before I give you the answer on the next slide. The correct answer in this question is choice A. Coccidiomycosis what we're talking about and what we're dealing with here is erythema nodosum. Now, what were you supposed to pull out of the question stem in order to get this question right? Let's notice a few things. One, this is a 21-year-old female who's complaining of a rash. The rash is described as being erythematous and raised. It's located anteriorly along the shin. It's painful to palpation. And when they basically cut into the rash, they see subcutaneous fat involvement. And this is just a slam dunk diagnosis of erythema nodosum. So I'm going to give you the short, and, the short and sweet here, and then I'll give you the full explanation in just a second. But erythema nodosum refers to red raised inflammatory lesions of subcutaneous fat, and it's due to a type 4 delayed hypersensitivity reaction. Classically, it's associated with autoimmune conditions like inflammatory bowel disease, but it's also associated with some lesser known diseases, including sarcoidosis, coccidiomycosis, leprosy, and histoplasmosis. And this is why I wrote the question, and you've probably seen a couple practice questions in this series like this before, where once you move beyond, once the test writer moves beyond the one really high yield association, medical students throw their hands up in the air and they're like, WTF, how, how am I supposed to know that? Well, you know, technically you need to know all of the associations and test writers aren't looking at the most commonly used question banks or the most commonly used review textbooks. And they're not just going to pick out the one the first high yield association. They could go deeper than that. And this is a good example of something where you need to challenge your brain to not just memorize the first association, first association, but the second, the third, and the fourth. And frankly, that's just something that you need to do for USMLE and Comlex. This kind of reminds me of the question I wrote about agranulocytosis and clozapine and mirtazapine, right? Everybody knows that clozapine is associated with agranulocytosis, but when you go beyond that first really high yield association, what else is it associated with? Same concept here. Erythema nodosum can occur in several disease processes, and you guys need to know all of them. Now, for those who really like the full typed out explanation, which you may see in other resources, I have typed up an explanation for you. Erythema nodosum is an inflammatory condition involving subcutaneous fat, also known as paniculitis. The pathophysiology involved is due to a type 4 delayed hypersensitivity reaction. It presents as an erythematous raised nodule on the anterior shin in the lower extremities. While the condition can be idiopathic, it is usually a sign of an associated underlying condition. Classically, the lesion presents along with autoimmune conditions, chiefly inflammatory bowel disease, now, I just mentioned that, but very high yield to know, it can also be associated with sarcoidosis, coccidiomycosis, leprosy, histoplasmosis, and strep pharyngitis. The presence of the rash should prompt further workup to rule out associated conditions. Definitive treatment involves treating the associated or underlying condition. So now that you understand what erythema nodosum is, and you have the big picture takeaway from this question that you need to know more than just the first or highest yield associated condition, let's go back to the question and see if we can work backwards and figure out the correct answer without having necessarily known that erythema nodosum is associated with coccidiomycosis, right? So let's say that you didn't know anything beyond inflammatory bowel disease and you're looking at these answer choices and you're like i don't in your head you don't realize the answer 
is A, because you don't know that A is associated with erythema nodosum, but you do know what B through E is associated with. So let's go through this question and work backwards to eliminate answer choices, because you could have gotten to the answer either way. Choice B, Cushing syndrome, and choice C, pancreatic, pancreatic, I don't know why I can't say this today, pancreatic adenocarcinoma are both associated with acanthosis nigricans. Now, acanthosis nigricans is that hyperpigmented velvety plaque that usually is in the folding areas of the skin. So that's going to be your armpit, you know, your neck, etc. It's classically associated with states of insulin resistance or occult malignancy, right? So in this, in this answer choice, B and C, B is a state of insulin resistance and C is occult malignancy or malignancy. It doesn't have to necessarily be occult. But acanthosis nigricans is certainly not the correct answer here because if you look at the question stem, there's nothing being described to you as a hyperpigmented velvety plaque you were given that the lesions are actually on the anterior shin, so they're not in the armpit, they're not in the neck. We have no reason to believe that our 21-year-old female who happens to run track has any state of insulin resistance. So as you can see, acanthosis nigricans is certainly not the correct answer. And then the treatment for acanthosis nigricans is you treat the underlying condition. So if you have somebody who's obese, has type 2 diabetes, has insulin resistance, and you get them to lose weight, exercise, the rash should go away. So acanthosis nigricans is associated with B and C. There's no association with these answers and erythema nodosum. So you can eliminate B and C even if you don't know that choice A is associated with erythema nodosum. Let's look at choice D, squamous cell carcinoma. So squamous cell carcinoma is a complication of actinic keratosis, radiation, xeroderma pigmentosum, and in this question stem, I'm, I'm not going to dive too deep into squamous cell carcinoma because there's a lot of associations and a lot of skin conditions that can complicate and give rise to squamous cell carcinoma. But there's nothing in this question stem that should suggest to you that the patient is at risk for squamous cell carcinoma. And I even went out of my way to say that the patient has been studying a lot recently to let you know that there's not there hasn't been a lot of sun exposure lately. So even if you th you're thinking, oh my gosh, is this skin cancer? The answer is probably no. So we're going to rule out choice D. Let's look at choice E, hepatitis C. Hepatitis C is actually associated with lichen planus. Okay, lichen planus. That's going to be your disease with the six P's. You've probably seen this all over the place. Those six P's are pruritic, purple, polygonal, planar, papules, and plaques. Okay, so those six P's describe lichen planus. Now, usually, and you see the picture here on the right, you'll, if a question wants you to pick lichen planus, not always, but usually they're going to describe Wickham striae. And that little teeny picture in the bottom left corner of the bigger picture on this slide shows you Wickham striae. So those are reticular white lines on the surface of the lesion in lichen planus, and usually that occurs orally. So if they show you this picture or they describe that to you, they're pointing you in the direction of lichen planus. But in this question stem, there was nothing like that. They described erythema nodosum. It was a slam dunk description. You should rule out lichen planus and therefore rule out the associated disease with lichen planus, which is hep C. Now, do, do keep in mind that hepatitis C is associated with lichen planus because if they give you this picture and say, which of the following diseases might this person have or get or whatever, it's hep C. Treatment for lichen planus includes steroids and phototherapy. So that's it for the question. Again, the point that I want you to take away from this practice question is that first, know all associations, right? Don't know just the first one that gets listed in first aid or any question bank or whatever resource you're using to study. If you only know the first association, you're probably going to miss a lot of points. And two, the whole purpose of my high yield video question bank series is to train your brain to solve hard problems. And even if you don't know that coccidiomycosis is associated with erythema nodosum, use the method I showed you. Work backwards. Ask yourself, is Cushing syndrome associated with what they're describing? Is squamous cell carcinoma associated with what they're describing? And use that clinical reasoning 
to rule out answer choices and get yourself more points. All right. I hope this was useful for you. I hope that at this point in the series, if you're following along, that you're starting to develop those patterns of thinking that are going to help you dominate your exam.